The Lacey Howard here with um, Third Movement. Want to bring a video to you guys. Um, before we get into the video, I want to get into a quick word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for you, Father God. We thank you for all that you do, Father God. We thank you for your, your, your beautiful creation, Father God. We thank you for each other, Father God. We say we love you and you love each other. We ask you to forgive us for our sins. We have committed intentionally and intentionally, Father. Let this word, Father God, Go to people who need it, Father God. Let it let it go to, to the people who are looking for understanding, Father God, especially in this area, Father God. I pray that someone hit us, Father God, and get saved, Father God, they get closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so um, this video right here is going to be talking about um, a lot of different things when it comes down to kids. So let's get into um, 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 the gist of this video, um, we, 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 we talking about, there's no more prayer in school, so now, we can't de depend on our kids getting their spiritual life from the school, where can it come from, next on the list would have been church, now, there's no more spiritual Building um, in a lot of these churches for kids, right? So where should it come from? Well, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 22 and 6, it says, Train up your child in the way you should go. And when, she get old, when, when they get older, they will, not, they, they will not turn from it. When it says train up your child, it does, it's not talking to a, a, a teacher, it's not talking to a pastor in the sense of you can just drop your kids off and that pastor is commanded by God to train up your kid. No, it's talking to the mother and father. It's talking to you, telling you to train up your kid in the way that they may go. So whether you know it or not, everything you do is training your child. Now, I, I taught school for about... Uh, about a good six years, I believe it was, and I noticed that these kids, in a and I and I talked to young kids too. I I, I did early child uh, early childhood, so it was um er, um elementary age, and I noticed these kids were soaking up everything you teach them. They just soak it up, soak it up, soak it up, soak it up, and I'm saying to myself, a young guy, then I'm saying to myself, wow, these kids are just soaking up everything I said. I wonder what happened if I had a spiritual school where I would just talk them spirit, just teach them spiritual stuff all day. Look how they're soaking this up. You are teaching your kids something every t every time they look at you. You're teaching your kids something, and you're not aware. See, we have a problem in the body of Christ. If I can just be frank with you, we have a problem in the body of Christ where. We delegate our spiritual life to spiritual people, to pastors, to um, bishops, the, the mothers in the church. And all. No, your spiritual life should be taken care of by you. Like Jesus talked about the Nicolaitan, uh, Nicolaitan system or the Nicolaitan spirit, right? The spirit of, I'm going to lead you in all things spiritual. That's not what Jesus wanted. Jesus wanted you to get into the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit lead you, not a man. The only person that should be leading someone is the, is the father because he's the head of the family. And he should be leading, leading his family into spiritual things, right? When, when I get married and have kids, it's my responsibility to teach my wife and, and my kids spiritual stuff. Now, the church is there to aid, but we're living in a day where now we're, we're depending on the church to do the job that we're supposed to do. Men, we are supposed to teach our wives and teach our kids the spiritual things. That means we should be in the spiritual things. I apologize, that was my phone. But we should be into spiritual things. It says, it says, we, we, I, I, this just came up to me, so I want to go into Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. It 
It says in Ephesians five, um, chapter twenty-two. Wives, submit your um, submit to your own husbands as as the to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, also is Christ the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subjected to the husband, I mean to Christ, let the wives be subjected to their husband in everything. Husband, love your wife, just as Christ loved the church, and give himself up for her. That he may he might sanctify and clean her with the washing of the water by the word. So if God, if Christ cleans the body by His word, we should cleanse our our family. We should we should we should have the word present into cleansing the family, right? To cleanse our wife, to cleanse our kids, to cleanse ourselves. So it, it's a picture of God in me, me and my wife, my wife and the kids. It's a trickle down effect. Now I understand, you know, those who are there, uh, that that that's into that feminism, whatever. Do what you do. But for the correct way to the things to be ran is that order. I like how Ephesians six and four put it. It says, "And you, fathers, do not provoke your child to wrath, but bring them up in training and admonition of the Lord." Right? This is a job for us, right? So so the school system taking prayer out of, of the school shouldn't mean that our kids' spiritual life ended. And that's in a sense what's happened what has happened. So we complain about oh um the school took out prayer and now they have to put guns in. No, the school took out prayer. But the reason why they got put, they have to put guns in because we didn't keep our kids in the word. See, the Bible tells us that that us Christians, we have a light to shine, right? And if we had kids with a strong enough light coming up in the word of God, you know, where there's, there's a two, three times a week Bible study in the home, let alone at church. We can see our kids shining a light much differently than they are right now. I, 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 really, I really want you guys to realize that we have to start bringing up. And, and, and I'm going to get more about this in, in when I get into the, 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 the Why Family series. But we got to start bringing our kids up in the ways of the Lord. And it then start depending on somebody else doing it. Um... Being in education field, the one thing that we would we would have, like really drilled in our head was education starting at, starts at home, and the parents that cares more about the education, their kids go the father the furthest. And we got to take that same approach to the spiritual life. The spiritual life starts at home. There's an epidemic of kids leaving home who are Christians when they leave, but there was no building up. There was no training up to, to, to where they can go. Yes, they went to church. Yes, they went and heard a pastor preach, but their parents didn't do it. Their parents wasn't living it. And they get on these college campuses and these atheist teachers are having a field day turn these kids into atheists. That we have we have play into that. Like we can change that. We have the power to change that just by being obedient to God's word. Obedient to the word that we should teach our kids the way that they should go. Now, here's the deal, right? I had a friend tell me, you know, um, my kids are like a little old and everything. How do I start? You start simply. If your kids are 15, I don't care what kids, how old you was, when you, you may be one that's just finding Christ, and your kids are 15, you are the parent. You have to install this. You have to install the Bible reading into your life, and they're going to pick it up, and they're going to follow your lead. You can't just say, well, we're going to read the Bible once we know. They got to see you reading the Bible. They got to see you living it. They got to see you walking it. They got to see you doing it better so they can believe it, and they will start following you. 
and you with young kids, well, then you know what? There's a lot of different things you can do if you got young kids. There's different apps, cool apps, man. Um, for I would say from the ages of four to about twelve, where they can do different things. Um, in, in these Bible apps for kids, there's a lot of cool apps. There's a lot of things you can do. Um, um, install a policy where okay, you want to play video games, you get an hour of video games for every hour of Bible study. Some simple as that, as, as that. The only thing you need to do is start, and it has to start with you. Build family activities around it. Go on and try to get some Bible um, um Bible games to play with them, where they where they're encouraged to 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 to. to to get into the Bible so they can win. I mean, it's a lot of different things you can do. But most importantly, it starts with you. It starts with you getting inside the Holy Spirit. You being obedient to God's Word and start studying the Word of God. And then out as you're studying the Word of God, put it in practice in your life. Um, you see the, you see the, um, the screen is asking you to like, subscribe, comment for community. Um... Check us, um, check us out um, on, on, on Saturday night at seven. We're gonna try to be live streaming um, the, the 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 spiritual uh, understanding spirituality or understanding the spirit life. I, I don't know what I'm gonna call the series yet, but we we're, we're gonna do it live where you can get a deeper understanding of of the spirit realm versus um, the flesh uh, our, our our realm, right? Because there is a spirit realm, and understand how we can. Work better in our spirit realm, and it can work better in this realm. It says, um, the Bible says, um, on earth as it is in heaven. So there should be a lining, a, a lining of what it is in earth as to what it is in heaven. So um, stay tuned for that Saturday at seven, um, um, seven p.m., seven in the afternoon. Um, we'll be live. You'll be able to ask questions and everything, and. And um, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to uh, let anybody come in. I don't know if there's going to be a link. But still, you should be, um, you should be, with, the, um, be with me on, on Google Plus just in case. The Lace Hour on Third Movement.